By now, you've probably had the chance to hear or even get your hands on Nautilus, our complex delay network. But you might not be aware that there's a whole layer of configurability beneath the surface of our subnautical friend. From reassigning attenuverters to changing the sonar output signal and a bunch of other cool stuff, I'm going to show you how to really get into the heart of Nautilus. We made a super simple web-based tool which lets you change settings, export a file, copy it into Nautilus through the USB on the front, and majorly rewire your module to do very different things from its default settings. If you haven't already met, I'd like to introduce you to Narwhal. Using this tool, I'm going to show you how easy it is to keep digging into this module. You're going to like this. So how do we get here? You can pause the video and click in the description below. I'll wait right here for you. Okay, here it is. The layout is simple and straightforward, but I'll still go over every corner of Narwhal so we can take full advantage of this awesome tool. On the right side, there's three buttons. First up is the day night mode for Narwhal. You can see what this does. It's a nice touch. Next up is the download button. Pressing this button will export and download the current settings in Narwhal as a singular file for Nautilus to read. This is called the options.json file. And down here is a second download button, which is the same as the top button. I'll go into more detail about these buttons and how to use our new file in just a second. Don't worry. If you're wondering what the actual file looks like inside, here it is. The file has the settings and their states in a list which Nautilus reads. If you want to, you can even edit the file in the state to change settings, but you'll need to reference the available setting options for the file to work. The beauty of Narwhal is that it provides all the available settings in a clean visual package, free of any confusion about programming. And if you want to be cool around your friends, you can always show them how you program your Nautilus. To the left of the download button is the defaults button, which resets all the settings within Narwhal to their defaults. This is great for when you're diving deep into the settings app, but then need a quick exit to get back to your original state. On the far left of the header, you'll see a drag and drop section called load from options.json. Here you can drop an existing options file into Narwhal, which then updates on the interface to match those settings. Okay, let's go back to the download button and download the file to quickly run through how to load a new options file into Nautilus. This will be helpful for when we look at all the different settings so you can test them out as we go. Now that I have a new options file ready for Nautilus, I'm going to remove the USB drive from Nautilus, place it into the computer, place the new options file onto the USB drive, and you want to make sure that it's either replacing the existing options file or that you've taken the old file off. Then we eject the USB drive from the computer, put that into Nautilus, and it updates, which is shown by this white LED flash at the base of the kelp, and there's no need to power cycle. Now that we know how to export our settings from Narwhal and get them into Nautilus, let's check out some of these killer settings you can tweak, and you know we'll be adding more. Transpose Up adjusts the Shimmer Delay Mode Semitone. Here you can change the default octave pitch shift to fifths, sevenths, or anything between octaves. All right, let's change the shimmer to fifths. So you can see here that the options for transpose up are numbers, and these correlate to the semitone within that octave range. So to pick a fifth, we have to choose semitone seven, since the seventh semitone above the root pitch makes a perfect fifth. If you don't know this stuff, that's okay. Pick a number, export a file, great way to learn. Okay, I've exported a file with this new setting, and now I'm gonna insert the USB drive into Nautilus to hear the difference. When I plug it in, you'll see Nautilus update its settings in real time, so you'll hear the pitch shift change while the delay lines are running. Pretty sweet. All right, here we go. The 
next option, transpose down, acts the same way as transpose up, but for the de-shimmer delay mode. This lets you adjust a pitch in semitones within the octave range below the root pitch. Okay, let's tweak these settings. I'm gonna set the semitone to one and turn up the delay frequency and hopefully we'll get a great nose dived pitch delay going. All right, we export the file, insert into Nautilus and Nice. Narwhal gives you a few different settings we can use to tweak the freeze function. Let's start with freeze mix behavior. The setting changes how the mix behaves when freeze is activated. The default is normal and that means the mix doesn't change at all when freeze is activated. The two other options are where we can really spice things up. So punch in forces the mix from fully dry to fully wet when you hit freeze. If you've played with a data bender before, you'll recognize this behavior as it's the same as the freeze mix behavior. If mix isn't fully dry, then freeze's mix behavior will match the default normal setting. The last option here is always wet, which forces our mix to full wet whenever freeze is activated. So unlike the punch in setting, always wet will always go full wet regardless of the mix position. Using these settings is great for designing punch in effects to spice things up or to create cool glitchy delay patterns. There's just so much. The next setting also involves freeze and more specifically whether or not activating freeze is quantized on the clock or not. The default setting quantizes freeze activation. This means that when you press the freeze button, freeze will wait to activate until the next clock pulse, which gives you those perfectly timed frozen buffers. Turning the setting off leaves freeze to activate immediately when you press the freeze button. This can be great for dialing in asynchronous frozen buffers. Clear on mode change sets whether or not our delay lines clear when changing delay or feedback modes. The default setting is off, which means there's no clearing of the buffer and delay feedback modes will instantly change while keeping all the delays in place. When enabled, all our delays are cleared each change which can be useful for avoiding any clicks that could be introduced in the delays. All right, you thought we were done with freeze, but we have a little more. The buffer locked freeze makes sure that all the delay lines are locked to a fixed buffer at the clock rate. When deactivated, our buffer isn't locked 
meaning that any changes made while the buffer is frozen, like changing the resolution, for example, would be destructive to the buffer. Let's take a listen. Our final three settings involve setting the function of a particular parameter on Nautilus, and they can really open up the possibilities for internal routing, self-patching, and more. Attenuverter target one assigns the dispersal attenuverter knob to any CV input on Nautilus. This means that you can use either attenuverter knob to attenuate and invert your signal sent to any knob on the module. Did you get that? These attenuverters can be set to control anything. Yeah. So here I've assigned the dispersal attenuverter to resolution and the feedback attenuverter into depth. This is amazing, right? that Nautilus has an output jack separate from its audio outs called sonar. Sonar is a collection of signals algorithmically generated from Nautilus's sonic findings, and you can cycle through the different signals using Narwhal. The default setting is stepped voltage, which is a stepped CV sequence generated by stacked delay pings within the delay network. Quantize the output to drive your sound source's melody or use it to modulate different aspects of your patch. Next up is Master Clock, which is simply an internal or external clock output. This is great if you want to use Nautilus and its tap tempo as the main clock in your system, or if you want to patch an external clock source out to another point in your patch. And last is the variable clock output. This output is a generative gate sequence which is determined by the delay taps and the resolution rate. You can use the output to drive an infinitely changing sequence or take the output into a gate switch, which could selectively send gates from Nautilus out to trigger all sorts of different events in your system. As you know, the possibilities are endless. And that covers the current settings available for Nautilus. Of course, we have a lot in store for the platform, including new configurable settings and features on Nautilus, incorporating additional modules into the platform, and more. So make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the little bell for notifications. That way you're the first to know when an update drops. Until next time, happy patching. Yeah.